Um, so before we begin, uh, in addition to thanking you for showing up and uh, being lively, I want you to also imagine yourself in China in 1995. I don't know if any of you have been to China, but it was a pretty primitive place back then. And I was alone. And I was 300 kilometers from the nearest city, okay, which is called Kunming in Yunnan. And I was there doing field work on a minority group I was living with, this group, the E, that had their own language. I was living in the village. And I was in a tribal elder's hut by candlelight. And we were about to have dinner. And it was really a difficult time in China and also having foreigners even in these kind of places because they were very poor. And so, number one, I was the only English speaker there, okay? There was no running water, there was no electricity, no cell phones, no internet. I was the first foreigner these people had ever seen in their lives. And I'm here trying to learn their culture, what it's like to be them, to think and feel how they think and feel. And it was super hard because they didn't trust me. They don't trust you. And why should they? You know, you're this strange Caucasian kid with crazy curly hair that scares their children. I mean, they cry, right? And they run away. I'm serious. They cry and they run away. I mean, I don't know how I'm going to do my job. And, you know, I'm a stranger, a shengren, and I'm a dabiza, a big nose. And I'm crazy looking with crazy hair and they think I'm the devil. But, but. I thought, well, I have to get through this. <laughs> and so I didn't think we had any common ground. Or did we? A few minutes into the meal, the village elder, the, the elder leader of the tribe, pulls out these cups and dice. I'm like, what the hell is this? And um, two bottles of baijiu, which is rice wine. Really, it's kerosene. It's, it's vodka in China, OK? It's two huge bottles. And he serves bowls to everyone. And, you know, apparently this is how you get to know each other in southern China, Chinese style, with drinking games. I'm like, oh boy, this is not going to go well. And so I started playing, and they're teaching me the rules, and I'm learning how people play their hands, and, you know, who's, who's bluffing, and who's telling the truth, and passing the buck. But actually, right away, I realized that there's really only one rule. When you lose, I'm the foreigner, I have to drink a bowl of li liquor with every village elder. There's five. So there's, there's 20 people, all the families and the five elders, and I'm like, oh man, this isn't going to go well. But actually, after a few minutes, I had a great time. I started feeling good. It was a very addictive game, very addictive, and I loved it. And we were laughing at each other's mishaps and things like that. And within a few hours, I realized I'd learned more about these unique people than I had in days, living with them. And we did it all with games. Okay, all with games. So for the last 23 years, I've been going in and out of China, living and working there. That situation of family-style gaming and drinking has happened to me hundreds of times, whether I've been you know, an anthropology student, I'm buying merchandise at a factory, and now I'm selling on Tmall and Taobao. We're doing merchandise. Um, Chinese people, I don't know that much, right, in life, right? But I do know this. Chinese people love games. They love gambling. But more important than all of those things, they love to gain each other. And your ability to do that, to execute that with your friends in China, is your calling card success there. It is an irresistible offer of friendship. It is, more importantly, an invitation to get on the inside. Okay? Now, I have a very close friend who I've known for about 18 years, about the same amount of time I've been going to China. He's one of my best friends in the world. His name is Dan Ding. And we play a game called Who Gets the Best Deal? And it's been going on for literally like 18 years. We do this weekly, right? It's almost, we can't resist telling each other how good our deal is. Meaning, who got the most concessions, found the best channels, found the best products at the best price, or the best services, or the hotel rate at the peninsula for nothing. Right? Who has that connection? Now, it's not just Danding and I that play this game. Actually, in China, there's a place every day where 600 million people play this game. Who gets the best deal? And that place is called Taobao. So 